as you know, creatine is one of the most popular dietary supplements right now. It seems like everyone is talking about it. It's in Women's Health Magazine, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, but a lot of people are confused about what creatine is and what it actually does. So I'm gonna share with you how creatine helps improve cellular energy production and supports cellular energy production in your muscle tissue, in your brain, and in your eyes, as well as your placenta and other tissues in the body. Now, it's important for the brain because creatine levels in the brain are found at 180-fold the concentration compared to in the plasma, which means it's very important for the brain, for your neurons, for your retina cells, and beyond. But let's talk and use an analogy. Okay, if we think about creatine in energy in terms of money, Okay. As many of you know, I'm sitting here, I'm moving my, my muscle, my bicep muscle. The way that my muscles are able to contract is by breaking down ATP, freeing up a phosphate from that and making ADP. Now, what creatine does is it helps in that rephosphorylation process. I know some of you have heard these multisyllabic words and you're like, what is he talking about? So let's talk about this analogy. Okay. Let's pretend that it costs one ATP to move my bicep muscle like this. One ATP in this analogy is 50 cents. So I moved my bicep. We finance that with one molecule of phosphate from ATP and we made ADP. So we now have two quarters, we have 50 cents. In order for me to move my muscle again, I need to take two quarters or a phosphate group from the phosphate pool. Now you can see if I'm moving my muscle intensely that I'm going to deplete this phosphate pool. So we just made ATP, again we had ADP, and then I wanna move my muscle again. So we now don't have a phosphate pool because I'm starting to move my muscle a lot. So this is where creatine comes in. What creatine does is it just increases the phosphocreatine creatine pool. As you can see here, this phosphocreatine pool has more quarters. It has more phosphate groups. So that if I'm doing CrossFit, I'm doing explosive workouts, I move my muscle, get one more phosphate, move my muscle. So we're rephosphorylating or we're remaking an inactive energetic form to an active form. Remember, ATP is the cash or currency within your brain, your retina, and your muscle tissue. This is how you literally finance reactions to make things work in the body. This is why you breathe. Literally, the inhalation of oxygen is made for the final electron transfer to make cellular energy in the form of ATP. This is why you eat food. Both fats and carbohydrates are ultimately combusted through aerobic aspects of the mitochondrial oxidative phosphorylation to make cellular energy. This is why the ketogenic diet is so popular because it's more efficient in doing so. And this is why creatine is so popular. So as you can see here, the phosphate pool now has increased, right? We have more quarters. We have more of a buffer or reserve. So if you're doing a lot of thinking, a lot of learning, you're doing a lot of cognitively intensive tasks within your brain, or you want to optimize cognition, this is why you should consider creatine. Similarly, if you're doing high intensity explosive exercises, you're doing CrossFit, you're doing weightlifting, you're doing powerlifting, you're running, you're sprinting, you're doing high intensity interval training, you're doing high rocks training, your muscles are moving a lot and they depend upon that remaking of ATP because what happens every time you move your muscle, you're taking away two quarters. And so you wanna increase this phosphocreatine pool right here by giving your body more creatine. Now, some people, such as men or people that uh, uh, eat an omnivorous style diet, if you are eating a carnivore style diet, if you're eating red meat, if you're having a lot of fish, a lot of shellfish, a lot of eggs, uh, things like that, you're going to have enough of the, of the precursors for your kidney and liver to make creatine. However, if you're eating a vegan diet, a vegetarian diet, if you're a female, if you don't eat enough red meat and you're just relying upon chicken, you might have a functional deficiency in creatine. So therefore, parts of your brain not, may not work optimally. Maybe your eyesight might be compromised and or maybe your exercise performance 
might be compromised. So this is why creatine is so popular. Small little plug here over at Myoscience. We have sourced some of the best creatine in the world from Germany, known as the Crea Pure raw material. This is the only non-Chinese creatine that is offered throughout the world. Most companies are selling you creatine made in China. It's only 84% material. So if you buy a five gram creatine monohydrate, you're only actually getting around 4.1 grams of creatine, whereas this material is a 99% purified material. So if five grams are on the label, you're actually getting five grams. It's a really clean product. People really notice it. So that's just one thing that you can consider. Now, I think it's important to understand that creatine is really important in the brain. As I mentioned, studies show that brain creatine levels and concentrations are 180 fold higher compared to that seen in the plasma, because it turns out your brain is very energetically demanding. In order to resynthesize uh, neurotransmitters and prune neuronal activities and so forth, your microglial cells are constantly pruning and churning and, and optimizing the brain so that you can learn, adapt, and function. Uh, that is very energetically demanding. And it turns out that inborn errors in creatine synthesis and transport are often linked with mental re retardation, speech impairments, and cognitive decline. Let me read to you a quote from this excellent paper that I will cite in the description below and here on um, the chapter. Indeed, the brain is one of the main targets of creatine deficiency syndromes, which are characterized by the absence or severe reduction of creatine in the brain. Patients exhibit mental retardation, delayed speech and language, epilepsy, and autistic behavior. Creatine deficiency syndromes are caused by defects in creatine biosynthesis enzymes, known as AGAT, and S-adenosylmethionine, guanidinoacetate, and methyltransferase, or GAMT. So it turns out that creatine is also intimately connected to the methylation pathways in the body. So individuals that have MTHFR or methylation defects would also benefit from creatine supplementation and or the creatine transport protein, which is something that I do want to address here. So many people take creatine in their coffee. I don't recommend doing that. Um, the best time to take creatine is actually either with a meal or if you're gonna do it fasted around exercise. Your exercised muscle will actually increase the absorption and utilization by some 25% compared to people who are not exercising. So why is it so popular? Of course, because it's helping improve cellular energy production. As a you know, company, Myoscience, we've heard from many customers, once they start taking creatine, boom, it's like the lights get turned on in their brain. Many people who have been on a vegan or vegetarian diet or who are not eating ample amounts of red meat or flesh from animals because of ethical or environmental reasons, they often benefit from creatine supplementation because they start to notice improved cognitive uh, performance and also sleep deprivation in people with mental health related issues. There's been many research papers that have recently found that people that are doing cognitive behavioral therapy, if they concomitantly take creatine, they actually improve uh, mental health, health scores. People who are sleep deprived, if they load up on creatine, we're talking 10 to 20 grams, they can offset some of the cognitive declines that are ascribed to sleep deprivation. So how does it work? As I mentioned, you're increasing this phosphocreatine pool so that in energetically demanding tissues, muscle, heart, brain, as well as retina, you're actually increasing the available pool of phosphate groups that can rephosphorylate inactive energy to make it into active energy known as ATP. So what do you think of this analogy? Does it better help you understand how creatine works and functions? And then it's not so obtuse. You know, I think People think, well, creatine makes your muscles bigger. No, creatine helps you have a better workout, which those adaptations improve strength and hypertrophy. It doesn't directly have any anabolic properties associated with it. Uh, taking creatine just increases the amount of phosphate groups in the phosphocreatine pool, which help indirectly supply energy for energetically demanding tissues. As I mentioned, the placenta is another energetically demanding tissue. You're building a new human. And so pregnant women should definitely consider taking creatine as well. So what do you think? Let me know in the comment section below, my friends. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe and I will catch you on the future video down the road.